In this second video in our series of configuring PowerEdge servers using Ansible, we'll be looking at changing BIOS and IDRAC settings. First of all, a good place to start is to make sure we have playbooks. And there are examples of those in the code that we have downloaded in the previous video. But it can be found on, found on GitHub for those who are interested. Just go and look up the Dell EMC Open Manage Ansible modules. And in there you have uh, an example folder with several playbooks included. Another place is to look at the actual source code of the modules. So if you download Ansible from GitHub, you will have a folder in there with uh, all the different modules for managing IDRAC uh, using Ansible. So we're just going into those folders there now. And having a look at both the Redfish and LEMC directories, which both contain different types of modules. And if you open up a couple of those, so we can see in here some examples for how to utilize this module. And essentially, that's a playbook. So if you check out another one. We will in here see examples of changing the NTP settings. And we will use exactly this code, just copy and paste really, for uh, our lecture in a couple of minutes. In addition, if uh, you're interested, you can download the playbooks that are used in this particular demo. I put them up on my GitHub account, so it's easy to get access to them there. They're essentially a combination of the examples that are in the code, as well as um, some additions for demonstrating certain functions. If you start off here by looking at the uh, settings for the NTP, for, uh, for the IDRAC, these are quite easy and quick to change, so they're a good place to start. Currently, we don't have any settings in there at all. NTP is disabled. We just execute the playbook against the server, and as you can see, it finishes very swiftly. If we refresh the page, you can now see the settings that we have included having been applied. So another thing that we can change is uh, the settings for, for example, power redundancy of the PSUs in the server. Right now they are, as you can see, set to not redundant. But uh, with a simple playbook we can change that. Let's have a look at the power redundancy playbook. And we modify that from not redundant to AB grid redundant. We'll go into details as to what values are valid a little bit later on in this video. So please hang around for that if you want to know how to create your own. So if you run this playbook, you can see that it only takes a couple of seconds. And once we refresh the page, the values for the power configuration have been updated. So let's look at the BIOS settings uh, as well, because obviously there are there are settings in there that are quite important that um, you probably want to modify frequently uh, as you get in new servers, etc. So right now we have a few settings in there that are set to disabled, one of them being the, uh, the virtualization technology. So if you look at the, uh, the playbook for this, we have, first of all, the three settings, uh, processor virtualization, the NUMA cluster settings, and the processor software prefetcher. I just randomly chose these ones. Anything would have been fine, really. So currently they are disabled, and we will change them to enabled. And uh, once that is done, we have to create a BIOS configuration job. This again has been copied from the source code of the module. Very easy. And finally, we reboot the system. Now, you don't necessarily have to reboot the system in the playbook. 
Uh, in this case, we have a test server and we don't really care. But uh, you can also just create the job and wait for the server to be rebooted during a maintenance cycle. Now currently the values are disabled for all these settings. We don't have any pending values because we haven't run our book yet. And uh, the server is switched on as you can see. So let's uh, run this playbook and it'll go through those three steps. We'll change the settings, create the job, and issue the reboot. That too is all done within a few few seconds time, so quite quick. Now if we go and refresh the settings in the UI while we wait for the server to reboot, we can see that the values that we wanted to change are now changed from um, well, their current values to pending. So you can see what settings are going to be applied. We can also go into checking out the job queue under the maintenance uh, menu, and we can see there that we have a BIOS setup job sch scheduled to be executed. And this will be updated uh, with the percentage as the job goes on, but we don't want to sit here and wait throughout, so I'll just skip ahead a bit. So now you can see the BIOS job have been uh, applied. And after that the server is booting up. And in the background you can see that the configuration job now has gone up to 100% complete. So that's how you change BIOS settings. Well, it's easy enough when you can use a playbook that already is done, uh, but what if you don't know the actual name for the setting that you want to change? Obviously, if you look at it in the UI, and you look at it in the playbook, the uh, settings are really quite different looking. So how do you find out what the actual name is of a particular setting that you want to change? Well, you can actually go to the Redfish interface, just through a normal web browser, you type in the IDRAC IP address, and then you add on the URI after that. And I'll put uh, the actual URIs uh, later on, I'll put that out in the uh, description of the video. So if we go and search for NTP settings, we can easily find them here. And you can find all the other settings of the server as well, at least for the IDRAC, because that's the area we're looking at right now. So let's just um, have a look at this uh, particular setting now. We think we're looking at a VLAN setting. Because it's not enough to know what the setting name is, you have to know what you can set it to in some cases. So we just SSH to the IDRAC itself, using put in this case. And we can just get the BIOS, or get system, or, or get IDRAC, to get information about the different uh, parts of the, the server. Now right now we're actually looking at the IDRAC settings. So, if we want to find out what our valid uh, settings for this particular entry is, we just do help idrac dot, and then we paste in the setting. And that will sh show us then what type of usage is uh, valid for that particular setting. So then we can use that to create uh, our own new playbooks where we modify the settings that we care about. Now for the uh, the power redundancy, that is stored in a different location. That is not stored in the IDRAC, that is stored on the setting, uh, system. So we have to look in a different place for finding out the values for that. So if we go back into the, uh, the browser, and we change this from IDRAC to system. Look at the attributes there. We just do a search for that particular setting, because there are many settings in there. And once you find that, we can easily see, okay, that's the one. And if we look it up, we can then see what are the valid settings for that particular entry. And in this case, of course, we do help system dot, and then the entry instead of idrac dot. And there you can see the valid entries. So this way you can create your own playbooks with your own entries for your own settings. Now, we still have the BIOS left, and the BIOS is a bit more involved. And the reason is that we have to go into a submenu to see the values of that. So we look at the, for example, the processor virtualization in this case. And if we look that up, you can see now that's enabled. But from the IDRAC, we have to go into a, um, a sub-menu. 
So we do we do help BIOS dot and then processor settings. And first do a get BIOS so you can see what entries are, are valid. And then we can paste in our setting and get the information for it. So that's all. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck creating your own playbooks.